Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to the latest video and in this video newsletter we are going to talk about robust settings found the Taguchi way. Okay so we're going to talk about Taguchi robust design of experiments. Now this is the result of um, this is the result of a question that someone's asked me. Uh, I checked my video um, list on YouTube and amazingly and I'll soon have covered this before um, which is which is quite startling to me but anyway I'm going to talk to you about how Taguchi used to set up a DOE so that he could find robust settings now the important thing about this this doesn't need a Taguchi based DOE pattern to be run you can do this with any DOE pattern a full factorial a half fraction you can use the Taguchi screening DOEs, the L12, the L8. You can do this with any pattern you care to do because it's just a special method of setting up the DOE. Um, and by the way, you know, the idea that Taguchi is um, a kind of a DOE practice on its own seems a bit strange to me. Taguchi is just part of the DOE suite of approaches. And if you do a Taguchi DOE, it's just a design of experiment. It's just a different pattern. Uh, and you just have to understand that. So let's talk about how we find something called robust settings in design of experiments. Now, basically, let's, let's, let's treat this as if it's an ordinary full factorial. So we're going to go two level. Two factor full factorial, but it's going to have robust analysis attached to it. All right, so the two. Um, the two factors, we're going to take time at 5 and 10 seconds. We're going to take temperature at 70 to 90 degrees centigrade. Now the, ro the thing that we want to be robust to is outside outside humidity all right now clearly when we do the DOE I can control these two outside humidity unfortunately there is no dial for it so even if I could even if I could put this into um, a designed experiment I don't have a dial for humidity so I, I can't I can't say that this is the way I should set humidity. So what I need, I need to see if one of these two can provide me with robust settings to be robust to humidity. So that it doesn't matter about what the humidity is outside, the process is going to be robust to it. So let me show you how that works. Now if we just take the, the, the two factor full factorial for a second, that's going to look like this. So you're going to go so factor A, 5, 5, 10 and 10, 
factor B is going to be 70, 90, 70, 90. So that's the experiment that we're going to run. Now, of course, we haven't got humidity in this experiment. We haven't got humidity in this experiment because I can't put it here. So I can't make it a three factor full factorial. But what I can do is allow humidity into this experiment in a very special way. And this is what I'm gonna do, look. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collect a results. I'm gonna collect a results table. And what I'm gonna do is this. I'm going to collect, I'm gonna suggest three columns of data. So in other words, I'm going to run this DOE on three different days. Now we will have decided what the outside humidity is. So we'll decide what the outside humidity is giving us a problem. And then what I would do is this. I'm gonna to come to work and when I consider that the humidity is a lowish level. So I can't be certain where it's gonna be, but I would pick a value for the humidity. Then I'll run the process and I'll measure the results that I'm interested in. Let's say that this product eventually produces a strength result for the product. Okay, so, so I'm gonna measure the strength, produce the products, measure the strength when humidity is low. Then what I'm going to do is when I come to work one day I'll measure the humidity every day. If I decide now that the humidity is somewhere in the middle, again I can't be exactly certain but I would have decided this before I started. When the humidity is somewhere in the middle we'll run the DOE again and we'll measure the strength of the products produced. And then finally I'll come to work and when I consider that the humidity is at a high level, I will run the DOE again and collect some more results. Now what you're doing by building in, and this is, this is Taguchi's methodology, what you're doing by building in Taguchi's methodology on the end of your experiment, you are basically doing the experiment three times, because yeah? you're having to run the full setup three times. Now, we've got the results. Now, where does, where does the robustness come from? Well, the robustness comes from this. What you're going to do now is you're going to analyze for variability. So, what you'll end up with is a, typically is a standard deviation value. Standard deviation value. I end up with a standard deviation value across the three sets of results. So you're going to analyze the variability. Now when I do this, I always analyze standard deviation. So I treat it, I treat standard deviation in exactly the way as I would treat the mean, and I analyze it and I model it. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can then use the model to minimize standard deviation. Because if you have very little difference across these three results, this particular setting must be robust to external humidity. So in other words, if you can use the model, reduce the standard deviation to an absolute minimum, that must be a setting which is robust to outside humidity. Because despite the change in humidity, the results didn't change. So you can do it using a model, or you could just pick a winner. So you could just look across the three results, decide that setup three has got the minimum amount of difference in the data set, decide that that is the robust setting, and you could now just pick this as the setting that you're going to use. Now this possibility to identify robustness just from, um, without doing a model, just by using graphs, 
just using simple simple ways of doing this uh, without including the the variable in the actual full factorial itself this is Taguchi's methodology because noise generally you want to be robust to noise what's the problem with it though you can't control it so although there are fancy ways of finding robustness with a full factorial by analyzing the two-way interactions often you can't put the noise I can't put humidity in a DOE I can't control it but I can allow it to appear in the data table traveling in that direction then I analyze to minimize standard deviation and if I can do that those settings are robust to humidity and that's the way Taguchi did it I personally don't use a lot of what Taguchi did back in the day but some of the things he, he, he gave us are simply genius and should always be added to any design of experiments whether it's a full factorial, a fractional factorial, or whether it's a Taguchi design itself, because that is superb. And I've seen some exquisite designed experiments that sw have switched variables off. You can literally switch a variable off and make a process robust to external noise. That is robustness Taguchi's way.